Welcome back to episode number 223 of Behind the Ears Podcast. I am Uncle Danny, just touching base with all of you guys. On this episode, you will hear our third interview of the day for our Give Kids the World Marathon show, and it is Eric from Expedition Roasters. You know Chris and myself are huge supporters of them, and they are supporters of our show, uh, not only as a sponsor, but... We love their coffee. Uh, we rant and rave about it nonstop. And you could also hear in the show how much coffee I consumed during the show. <laughs> so with that being said, everybody, don't forget, head on over to ExpeditionRoasters.com. Try their Disney-inspired coffees. Uh, we do have a promo code. You always hear it. It's 20% off by simply entering EARS20 uh, in the promo code section when checking out. Um, and thanks for downloading the show, guys. Appreciate it. You're listening to the Behind Ears Podcast because everybody does Disney differently. The Behind Ears Podcast crew would like to thank the following sponsors for their generous support. Hey, everybody, it's Mr. Chris, and I got to tell you about Expedition Roasters. Listen, I'm a, I'm a pretty big coffee drinker, just like a lot of you are, but these people have got coffee right. Their coffees are made from selectively sourced premium and specialty grade Arabica beans. They provide the absolute best flavor and aroma, and select roasts even come directly from a single estate farm for a truly perfect cup that is never bitter. They've got awesome Disney inspired flavors, such as Roundhouse Roast, Route 66. Skipper's Brew, Dark Side Roast, Redhead Rum, and one of my favorites, Bob Slitter's Brew. Listen, if you want to have the taste of Disney in every cup, give them a try today. ExpeditionRoasters.com and Behind the Ears podcast listeners gets an extra 20% off your first order by using the coupon code EARS20. That's right, E-A-R-S-2-0. And you can find them over at ExpeditionRoasters.com. Brew your happy place. If you have a little one and you're going to Walt Disney World, you're going to need a stroller. I'll tell you what, kingdomstrollers.com is the place where you want to look into. I'll tell you, you know, I've destroyed my fair share of strollers while, while at Walt Disney World. and Those things are not cheap. But getting something from kingdomstrollers.com, they'll be able to help you pick out the perfect stroller for you. And the nice part is, is that because they're a Disney preferred provider, they'll be able to drop it off and pick it up right from your Disney resort at no extra charge. So if you don't want to necessarily destroy your stroller in the process and you want to have a great Disney vacation with your little one, contact kingdomstrollers.com and they'll set you right up. That's kingdomstrollers.com. <laughs> Yo, letters brew with the old school brown bag. I, I have, love their new bags, but I love the old bag. It's just nostalgia. I have I have some of that left. I have the whole bean version of that too. Oh, that's right. I forgot that they used to have that. Oh, my God. <laughs> All right. Well, without further ado, we've had him waiting long enough. And look at that. We are right on point. It's 1230. We said 1230, people. Ladies and gentlemen, we would like to introduce Eric from Expedition Roasters as he joins us live here. Eric, how are you doing? Very good. Thanks for having me on. Oh, hey. it's, a, you know, it's a pleasure to put a face to the name, you know? Right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we've been talking back and forth, through emails and everything else and on Facebook. It's finally great to uh, talk to you in person. Absolutely. First off, hey, where's your coffee for today? <laughs> <laughs> I just finished my cup before I came on. <laughs> Smart man. Smart man. You know, we actually had a lot of people, when they heard that you were going to be coming on the show, they were like, oh, this is going to be so cool because we know that a lot of our, a lot of our viewers and listeners of the show, you know, they, they have told us and decide, Hey, I just ordered some more coffee from an expedition roasters and just wanted to let you know, I'm like, cool. And um, it's also kind of funny because um, you know, all of a sudden I'll get like a message from my, like my daughter saying, Hey dad, guess what I got. And then she'll post a picture. Like I got more coffee. And I'm like, what can I tell you? It's awesome. And so we're really glad. I know we're really glad to have you here. Thank you for being a supporter of the show, first and foremost. And also in, in the same in the same level, thank you for being here today to help support Give Kids the World. And, um, you know, this has actually been 
this has actually been something we've wanted to do for a number of months. It's actually sit back on a Saturday, have a cup of coffee and just talk a little bit about um, how you guys got started and, you know, what inspired you to bring on basically an inspired uh, line of flavored coffees. And I know I've said over and over again that quite honestly, it's the only coffee I drink now. And I, I'll be honest with you, that is actually a true statement. Um, I used to go to, you know, a certain coffee place every once in a while that, you know, costs a lot of bucks. But the fact of the matter is, is that I, I drink that stuff now and it just tastes like battery acid. So, sorry, this is, this is going to be the section of the show where we're going to be rude and drink and eat. While <laughs> everybody just forgive us. It's not really good. It's not really good show etiquette. I know that. But um, Eric, if you'd be so kind, why don't you tell us a little bit, first off, tell us about yourself. Tell us a little bit about your company and how you guys got started. I know that there are just a lot of people that are really interested about your product. Uh, yeah, I mean, a lot of people don't know is that we actually got started, uh, you know, creating these different coffees to actually help give back to different charities. So that's why we're, uh, you know, really happy to be able to come on and uh, and help you guys out, you know, raise some money for for Give Kids the World, uh, we've actually donated to before. Um, way back in 2014, when we first started, we uh, were kind of just doing it on the side, a couple little coffees that we came up with that were actually uh, dog-inspired names, like uh, Tail Wagger and Caramel Retriever. And that was to help raise uh, some money for my sister and uh, some family and friends that work with animal rescues. Oh. And yeah, that's kind of how it started. It was just you know something fun to do on the side. And from there, you know, we wanted to bring our love of, uh, of Disney into it. So we thought, well, we can probably expand this a little bit and uh, maybe do some Disney inspired blends and, uh, and flavors. Um, we work with a local roaster and, you know, he's been showing us the ropes and, you know, and, uh, and really great with uh, training and the back, you know, story of how coffee is roasted, uh, you know, buying the coffee, you know everything. So we've been learning over the years and, um, you know, now come up with, uh, our own different roast profiles and stuff to create some of the new coffees with, as well as, uh, working with, uh, with a local place that creates our flavoring, uh, for us. And, you know, they have some stock flavors, you know, the basic stuff and some, some wild stuff too, but, uh, they also come up with anything we want to come up with kind of like the, uh, the bourbon streusel for the fortune of glory. Um, you know, when we did that one, uh, we figured it had to do some type of alcohol base being uh, indie. And, you know, we went with uh, whiskey at first and trying to come up with something like that from his, one of his famous uh, lines there. But uh, nothing really tasted, you know, a blend of something without being straight whiskey. So uh, <laughs> we didn't want to go. You know, we had the rum, which is which is a straight rum, which is great. But we wanted to do something a little bit more, you know out there as well. So, and so just, I uh, just coming on with another alcohol flavored one. And, uh, we were talking back and forth and, uh, and kind of came up with, you know, kind of a pastry cake, uh, with that little bit of vanilla icing, you know, mixed in with just kind of that, that hint of bourbon, having that little smoky aftertaste of bourbon flavor to it. Um, but yeah, that's how we kind of got started. And, uh, and like I said, we have been, Disney fans, me and my wife growing up, you know, going, living on the East Coast here, uh, going to Disney World all the time. I actually moved to Florida when I was 15. My parents moved down there. They're still there. Uh, but then uh, after high school and stuff, I moved back up here. And um, I almost moved out to California at one point to actually work for Disney. Uh, doing That's what I wanted to be. I wanted to be an animator growing up. Uh -huh. And... Uh, Got the opportunity, you know, to kind of as a tryout, knew someone that uh, that did a lot of the hiring and stuff for Disney Animation. He's like, yeah, just come out here. You know, I got an extra room and whatnot. And I don't know, I guess kind of chickened out from that. <laughs> it was a big move being, you know, eight very and big stuff. Move. And, yeah. yeah. So, uh, but it worked out well. Came back to New Jersey, met my wonderful wife. And, uh, you know, she's kind of the the business side to it, the money side. She's, I always say she's kind of my Roy to, to me being Walt with the creative side. So, uh, you know, I'm always like, you know, crazy out there thinking, Hey, let's do this. And we could, we could do this and all this crazy stuff. And she's like, well, hold on, you know, we need the money for that. And we got to make sure we're able to able to do that. And I'm like, well, you know, just find the money. <laughs> you know, There's money like, somewhere. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
Uh, I, I, I actually didn't know you were from Jersey. We got to get together sometime. I'm, I'm born and raised, and I've been here for almost 30 years now. Yeah, I know. You're down in, like, uh, the middle central Jersey, right? Yeah, I'm like, um, yeah, like Ocean County area. So okay. I'm down by the water, yeah. So let me ask you this. We have a couple questions in here, and normally we try not to bring a lot of questions into an interview, but because there's so many things going on with your company and, you know, us helping, you know, spreading the word about you guys. I want to answer some of these questions and let you answer them because we have no idea. Uh, Anita wanted to know, are any of your coffees peanut and nut free? Uh, yeah. I mean, they're all allergen free. Uh, some of them are made with natural uh, flavorings. So, you know, if you see something that's like our, our fudge brownie that, you know, the Bob's letters, it is made with, uh, with real chocolate as well. So if you do have like a chocolate allergy, then, you know, stay away from that one. Um, but as far as, you know, our regular coffees, you know, the facility and everything is, you know, allergen free and everything. And so that th those are fine. It would just be on the flavored coffees. If you have a particular allergy to, you know, to something that might be in that flavor, then, then yeah, because we do try and create a lot of our flavors with uh, with as much natural products uh, without having to artificially flavor it. Okay. Uh, we also have another question. If I'm ordering for the first time, which coffee would you recommend? If then they also go on to say, you know, trying if I like a light to medium blend or is it only flavored coffee? Uh, the great one to start out with uh, non-flavored is the Route 66 Tire Fix. Oh, you know, it, it's a morning blend, you know, kind of that breakfast blend, but we roasted it with a little bit more bite to it. So it's not that, you know, a lot of morning blends and breakfast blends are very light, blah, you know, flavored. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so we wanted to give it a little bit of, you know, that, that extra little bit of, uh, of kick to it. But that's a great one to try um, to start out with. And then, of course, on the flavors, we always have our sampler packs, uh, which we change up what flavors are in there, you know, every month or so. Um, and, you know, that's a great way to try the flavored coffees. Um, what was your first Disney blend? I'm sorry, Chris. Oh, go ahead. Uh, the first one that we actually came up with was Skipper's Brew because uh, we had this banana pie flavoring. And, uh, you know, we had the sampling from from the, uh, the the flavoring company. And as soon as we tasted it, like, you know, that's that's got to be Jungle Cruise inspired, you know. <laughs> so, And it was really wild and out there. And, my you know, it's kind of like my wife loves it. It's her favorite one. And... But it was also kind of a little bit leery because, you know, people think banana in coffee is, you know, that that's got to be awful. But, you know, when as soon as you taste it, you're like, wow, this is different, but it, it's really, really good. It's honestly one of my favorite flavor. It would be between that and bobsled. And I'm the type of person I know we talked about it earlier. I don't like a lot of flavored coffee. Like, that's why I still have that original bag because I only brew flavored coffee here and there. I'm more if I want coffee, I just want my regular coffee. But you know, the banana is not overwhelming. It is, it's subtle. It's there. You could definitely tell they have that banana hint to it, just like the Skipper's Brew. Uh, you, I mean, excuse me, uh, the Bobsled Brew. There's that hint of chocolate, but it's not that like creamer chocolate where that's all you taste is just chocolate. And that's what I love about your coffees. They're, everything is subtle, but you could still taste it. Yeah, and that's what we try and do. Uh, you know, we, we have a great coffee behind it using only, you know, uh, premium grade, you know, uh, Arabica beans and stuff and, you know, the roasting process and everything else. So we don't want to hide that behind, you know, just getting some artificial flavoring, just pouring it in there and hiding the coffee. So we try and, you know, flavor it enough where you can taste it, but still taste the coffee that's behind it as well. So it's not just overpowering and yeah, you're getting hit in the face with whatever, you know, flavor it happens to be. Yeah. I think that's also one of those cases, like in the case of um, Skipper's Brew, you know, when I first tried it, I'm like, yeah, this is a little different, but I could see this being paired with like as a dessert coffee, you know, you could have it with a, a, a piece of banana cream pie and go, oh yeah, this is, this is just absolutely, you know, splendid. Just like, okay, I ate my muffin along with fortune and glory. And I think my theory is right. I said, I said on Thursday that it would be a kind of, it would definitely be a brew that if you had to pair it with a meal, pair it with a continental breakfast of sorts. And it, it just, it just had a really good pairing with a, with a good blueberry muffin type of thing. I know it sounds weird. I'm not a sommelier, but you know, <laughs> sometimes some people say, you know, what could you compare it to? And I, I kind of use these comparisons as to, you know, what you can eat with it and stuff like that, because 
you know, sometimes people are a little nervous about flavored coffees. And I, I'll admit, I was too, but I think it was because I was drinking the wrong flavored coffees. Um, over the winter, my, my daughter came home and she bought like this, it was like an advent calendar for flavored coffees from, you know, a local, local, uh, discount mega mart. And, um, let's see, and there was 12 of them. And I think I still have 10 left if that tells you how bad they were. And, um, until until she tried, you know, the happiest brew that ever sailed, which is uh, peppermint mocha, uh, which is part of part of your uh, limited um, winter uh, roast. And, um, you know, it was one of those cases where, you know, there are people that I think are drinking more and more coffee and, more, and, and at different times of the day, too. And so it kind of gives people an idea of what you could enjoy it with. It's not just your morning Joe anymore. I usually do my coffee breaks my coffee break videos, especially anywhere between noon and noon and two o'clock. Of course, anything after two o'clock, I'm just going to be up all night, but that's a whole different story. See, altogether. it's funny you say that because I have a bag of the redhead rum and I just started a new position at work where I'm getting home between like five and six at night. So right. normally I would be having coffee when I was on the road because I still had a solid three to four hours of work after that plus the show. So I know I can have coffee later in the day. But the, I've been having the redhead rum when I got home around like five thirty, six o'clock, you know, while I'm making dinner with a nice cup of coffee. It's absolutely just it just hits the spot. And, you know, and I mean, just just we know how many people are buying stuff from you guys. You know, we see our listeners just coming out in droves and you've got people like Mary saying, you know, I can't say how much I love this coffee. I'm taking some of it into work this week to share with everybody using refillable K cup pots, you know. These you, you could hear me and Chris and Eric talk about his product all day long and be like, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, they're just promoting a product. This is a customer. We see Teresa all the time posting about, you know, Expedition Roasters. These are real people, real testimonies saying, you know, listen, they're not blowing smoke. This is a really good coffee company. So, yeah, and we love our you know our customers. Mary, we know we know her. You know, we see her orders coming through and uh, <laughs> she she does order a lot from us. And, uh, you know, it's it's why we do it, too. Like I said, we started off, you know, to, uh, to help donate to charities, which, which we still do. We don't, you know, pump that on our website or push that out all the time. It's just something, you know, we have a great month. We donate to uh, to different charities all, all the time. It's just, That's you know, awesome. What I'm doing, help them give back a little bit. We do have a request, though. Uh, they would love for you to bring back the peppermint mocha for Christmas in July. <laughs> yeah, I know the Lemon Sisters. <laughs> they, they, they wanted that coming back. Uh, we thought about it, but we're actually, because uh, of getting the bags printed up, they wouldn't be done in time because uh, we do them, you know, we get them printed up for the different limited edition ones. So uh, we, we thought of doing that, but it just didn't fit in with our schedule and getting everything printed. Uh, but it will be back, of course, you know, for the uh, for the holiday season again, along with our you know fall holiday roast and whatnot. So now I know you were running. Uh, I saw the post the other day. Do you want to talk a little bit about that? About the sales that are coming through uh, the next two days? Just so if people want to go buy directly, where do they find you and all that? Yeah, uh, we're at expeditionroasters.com, and of course on all social media as Exp- expedition roasters. Uh, but for this weekend, uh, we're donating all 20% of all the coffee sales is going to this great charity, Give Kids the World. Uh, and, you know, it doesn't matter. There's no code. There's nothing. Just pick up a bag, pick up 100 bags, whatever you want to pick up there. And uh, we'll donate 20% of that, you know, directly to them uh, after the weekend. And uh, like I said, we also do it throughout the year, you know, different months. We, we donate to them as well as some of the other charities as well. Most excellent. Most excellent. Um, do you offer flavored coffees in decaf by chance? Yeah, most of them. Uh, I think all of them, but the new one, uh, but the bourbon streusel, fortune and glory, we have in decaf. And, you know, we bring them on at, at if they sell well, we'll bring on the decaf version because decaf's not a big seller, of course. But, you know, we do know people that either can't have the caffeine or just want to drink it later in the day, whatever it is, and have a decaf as well. Because a lot of people buy, you know, a bag of the regular and then a bag of the decaf. So I guess they're brewing one in the morning and one in the evening. So. Or they mix them together and have a half-calf, half-decaf. Yeah, <laughs> a little half and half. Um, 
you know, and you guys do offer other things. I know you guys do offer wall art. You have some merchandise with cups and shirts. You know, they're 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 a one stop shop. They've got a little bit of everything. And I'm telling you, I've been eyeing up that one mug you have, and I'm gonna buy it today. I'm in a generous mood. I really want the one mug. It looks phenomenally awesome for a great price too. I love the Yeti that you guys have gone with. I think I got that pin from you guys. Love it. I think it is absolutely hilarious. I've got my disco Yeti shirt. Literally, I almost wore it today. <laughs> so I'm a big Yeti fan. Um, I love the packaging, you know, the 100% of, uh, caffeine, addi- you know, the addictive. I, I just, you guys do every, there's some subtle touches, but just the way things are packaged, your designs, your new bagging, your cons, you didn't stay stagnant. You know, you guys are constantly growing and getting bigger and pulling flavors out, bringing them back in, you know, enticing people like the Lemon Sisters to annoy you on a daily basis to bring back a, a flavor. And now you just got to wait. So, you know, the Lemon Sisters know when, you know, Christmas rolls around, you're just going to have to buy some more bags so you can stock up for the whole year. Yeah. And like I said, they, uh, as long as you don't open the bags, you know, they're good. We put a, just about a year, uh, expiration date on them cause they are, you know, vacuum sealed and everything else. So, so they're good. You know, once you open them, you know, of course you should use them within two weeks, you know, as best freshness, but you know, they will, they will last longer than that. Um, but yeah, I mean, we've kind of wanted to create this whole, you know, themed experience with coffee and, uh, we've just kept, you know, Plussing our bags and we've been able to, you know, to work with just some amazingly ta- talented uh, artists, you know, that create the uh, the artwork for our bags. And, you know, definitely look on the back of the bags, their names of whoever created whichever uh, bag you have are on there and go check them out, too, because they they are some really talented people and they, they sell other art as well. And, yeah, we have uh, we sell their art, you know, in uh, print formats. You know, we have some on shirts. uh we have some mugs. We we're actually going to be coming out with some new mugs and glassware over the summer too. Um, so we have a little bit of everything there. Cool. I, I I do have one. I do have one question. And I always wanted to. I will. I don't know the answer to this. This is one of those cases where I've been told many things over the years. Does it help if you keep coffee in like the fridge or freezer in order to keep it fresh longer? No, and that's actually what we put on the side of our bags. And you know, we have our little brewing instructions there. It's actually, you know, kind of that old school uh, grandma used to throw the cough, the tin can in the freezer or, or refrigerator. Yeah, exactly. But it's actually the worst thing you could do because coffee is actually a plant. And, you know, oxygen and stuff is what causes the de- decay and what causes coffee to go bad after you open it and it's been sitting out. So, you know, that's why we came up with these new bags that have the, the uh, Ziploc seal on them so you can get as much of the air out as possible. It helps keep it fresher longer. But keeping it in the fridge, keeping it cold does really nothing for it. Um, room temperature is best, uh, but the fridge or freezer actually hurts it because it can, you know, cause uh, ice crystals or water and, you know, condensation to build up in there. And that just causes the coffee to decay even quicker. I'm glad I asked because um, I probably I, I actually have a, a bag of some coffee I got from Disney a little while ago. And I'm like, eh, I'll just I'll just put it in here because my parents always did it. You know, yeah, exactly. <laughs> all, of course, all the coffee. It's kind of funny because all the coffee I have from Expedition Roasters are sitting in the pantry, kind of lined up, you know, ni- nice and neat, so to speak. Um, in fact, I, I'm actually surprised that my wife hasn't said something to the extent of, will you please somehow consolidate and take up less space on my in my pantry? Because unfortunately, and and I do know that my wife is watching right now so i have to be careful how i say this but she doesn't like coffee Mm -hmm. i still love her so yeah but uh you know she she doesn't like it when i make it so i try to make it when she's not around um but it's okay we all have our flaws um it's 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 funny you say that because the one day my girlfriend came over she's like can i have a cup of coffee i'm like yeah i'm like what would you like i pulled out about six bags of expedition roasters i was like you have an array of options but you can't touch the route 66 that one's mine i just slowly (laughs) put that one back in there i was like "Mm -mm, no i don't share (laughs) so eric in in, we were always you know we we love the fact that you've been able to come on and talk uh, talk to us a little bit about you know your company and everything that you do and it's been very informative. But let's talk of just a few few bits of Disney and your love for Disney. Um, now, you know, let me ask you this. When you go down there, this is a very tr- important question. 
What is your favorite restaurant? Uh, we actually haven't been to Disney World in a while. Uh, okay. We take kind of, we, we'll, we'll lay over there maybe because we have, you know, my family's still down in Florida. So we usually drive down and we'll stop there maybe for the day, uh, you know, just walk around, you know, downtown Disney or, you know, Disney Springs now. <laughs> and, uh, you know, and we'll, we might hit up a park, but we've actually been going out to California to Disneyland uh, huh? for the past mm, six or seven years now. Wow. Um, I actually proposed to my wife in uh, in Disney World, and that's where we honeymooned and all. Uh, and then for our 10-year anniversary, we actually, you know, made it out to California for the first time and just fell in love with, you know, Walt's original park. Because I, I, I'm a big, you know, kind of Walt historian and love, you know, his story as well, not just, you know, not just the theme parks. And it, it it's different out there. And, you know, we've been enjoying exploring California itself and, you know, enjoying those parks. But we are heading down to, uh, for the first time, spending a little extended stay now for about four days down at Disney World at the end of June. Uh, so we've got a bunch of, you know, stuff lined up. Uh, you know, we used to love the Primetime Cafe. Uh, that, that was great. Um, Tony's is always good. And, uh, you know, looking forward to trying the uh, Skipper's Canteen as well this time. <laughs> yeah, we, we've been talking about this. I've been dying to go there. I, it's like, it's like, there's the only thing is, just a funny part. Everybody who talks about the Skipper's Canteen always talks about the fish, yeah. which, is, which is like served whole, quite literally. And unfortunately, Danny and I can't get past the. <laughs> The eyes, <laughs> it has <laughs> eyes looking at you, and I, but I, I've always wanted to try other things. And the funny part about it is, is that I, I have to if, if I go, I have to go with like my daughter and possibly my my son in law to be, because they're the adventurous ones. My son and wife, not so much, but and I'm sure that they have their dinner staring back at them would probably not go over too well but that's okay. but you've you know if, if if you head out that way love to hear your two cents on it later <laughs> well I'll, have to, I'll let you know we'll, we'll give it a try and i'll let you know that sounds awesome that is actually pretty cool um you know there's there's a lot of people that we know that um really do have an affinity for disneyland over walt disney world and um and it's not necessarily just because of proximity uh, I do know a lot of people that are, you know, east of the Mississippi that still like to go to the West Coast in order to get their Disney fix. Um, I know that I wish I can actually go back to Disneyland again because there are so many different things that I know I didn't experience during my one trip there. And I, I definitely get your your drift when, it, you know, you go to Walt's original park. And I think there is something to be said about the originality of it. Um, but as a, as a Walt Disney world regular, it's not easy to get, <laughs> to go back over there. Cause you're like, you know, space mountain should be here. Yeah. You know, star tours is over there in another park, you know, and, 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 uh, and Buzz Lightyear is different. <laughs> you know, it's, 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 and, and space mountain is a lot more comfortable. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I can't ride it in uh, in Disney World anymore. It just kills my back. <laughs> uh, you know what? I, I hate to say it. I used to ride it out of pure nostalgia. Now I avoid it out of you know pure survival. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, and that's and when I first started going back to Walt Disney World, I say going back since I was a kid and I started going with my family. I used to absolutely love to go to Space Mountain and just even if it was by myself because it has a special place in my heart because it's something I remember doing with my dad during, during our trip. But it was just one of those cases where now it's like, I get off of it and I'm like, eh, anybody have any Tylenol Advil leave or, you know, Vicodin or something like that. You know, it's, cause it, it hurts. I'll just, I'll just put it right out there. It hurts, but yeah. I, know what, I know what you mean. Well, we're actually getting, getting to, um, we're getting to the top of the hour. Before we go, I am going to ask you the same question I asked Aaron a moment ago, and then I'm going to let you go ahead and plug away uh, for where they can find um, your products. So if you were stuck on a Walt Disney World ride, or I'll even go a Disneyland ride, if, if you know, however the case may be, if you were stuck on a ride for one hour, which ride would you rather have it be? 
Uh, I'd have to go with Jungle Cruise. I mean, it, it's our favorite ride, and you know, they can always change up the uh, the jokes as you're sitting there. So. <laughs> That's true too. That's a good one. I can see that. I mean, granted, there's only so many times that you can see the backside of water, but you know, <laughs> but comfortable seating. Depending on the day, you might not be like terribly hot. Yeah, as long as it's not mid August in Florida, yeah. Then, you know. <sighs> <clears throat> Middle, forward, huh? Yeah. Mm-hmm. But uh Eric, we really want to thank you and your company for you know doing your donations for Give Kids a World and taking time out of your busy Saturday uh to come on and you know spread a little joy for the uh for Give Kids a World and you know for making such a fantastic product. You know, and that's not you know, he's not paying us to say that there's nothing to do with who we are or anything like that. It has everything to do with you genuinely do make a fantastic product. And you could see some of the testimonies throughout this conversation from uh, some of the, your people who buy your product. You know, so continue making some fantastic coffees. We look forward to drinking your fantastic coffees. And we thank you for coming up. Well, thank you. And like I said, we've got a lot more, uh, you know, coming out. So. Keep your eye out there. We're always coming up with new creative things. And it, it's really because of the Disney community here. You know, they've, uh, you know, they've supported us so much and, uh, you know, we, we do it for them and they're always suggesting stuff. And we, we take suggestions, you know, like, oh, you know, what about this flavor or maybe this theme? And, you know, we, we definitely take it into consideration and, and try and do what we can. Most excellent. Eric, thank you so much for being a part of part of today's show. We will have to do this again soon where we can actually dedicate some more time to just talk Disney with you. But thank you so much for being a part of this effort today. Oh, no problem. And listen, thank you guys for, uh, you know, for putting this show together. And it, it's wonderful. And it's for a great cause. And we're just happy to be part of it. Have a good one. Have a good one, Eric. You too. Bye-bye. Well, it was I good got- to put a face to a name. You know, it really was. And I kind of said this earlier. I mean, you know, we haven't really been able to meet all of our guests um, over the period of time uh, all the time. I mean, we have met, obviously, many of them before. Um, But, Danny, I got a problem. Yeah. I'm out of coffee. (laughs) Well, I guess I'm I'm going to. I'm on my, like, third cup of coffee today. I'm going to have to go back. I'm literally so jittery right now though, this entire time. I've been just shaking my legs. I'm like, well, I want to go run. Who wants to run? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, want to run. You go for a run. You know, it's, like, it's kind of like going for a run uh, or, you know, worse yet. It's like, you know, when we're done tonight, I'm going to, I'm sure I'm going to probably sit outside for a few minutes and I'm just going to, I'm just going to, you know, be like this, you know, it's like, like, thank, goodness, thank goodness I'm not a surgeon because it's going to be a problem like this. So, Danny, before we bring on our next next guest, which is um, who is going to be Aaron Rittmaster of the Diz Dads podcast, um, why don't you can you give us a little bit of an update? Yes, yes, I can. As of right now, let's see, let's see, let's see. I was just loading that page. I want to start with the fact that we now have approached 70 shares on this show. We have been live for two hours, and we are absolutely killing it. So please, if you're just coming on, come out, share the show. You know, we're reaching thousands of people. We're approaching 10,000-person reach on this show. And with that reach, we are just coming up to about $1,100 raised. So we are definitely over 50% of our goal. We are $500 away from reaching last year's goal and only two hours in. So once again, we'd like to thank Christine, Albert, the Indie Disney Meet, Lindsay, Carol, Mike, Becky, Sandra, Linda, Enrique, Jennifer, Margie, Anita, Steve, Mary, Chris, Maureen, Nancy, Jeffrey, and Leanne. It's been an absolute pleasure being able uh, to help support. Um, actually, we, we just broke 1100 now. We just broke 1100. So I'm not sure who I might have missed, but we are now officially over 1100. Um, you know, we, we really we appreciate all of you guys, uh, you know, reaching into your pockets. And the more people we can, uh, you know, get to find a couple shekels laying around uh, just goes a long way. Like I said, the minimum is five dollars. Um, if you're interested, uh, you have to do a twenty five dollar minimum bid. Uh, once you do twenty five dollars, you're automatically 
entered into the Dooney purse that we have giving away later in the show. We have plenty of other fantastic things to be given away. We have an awesome lineup coming up here. If you're just joining us, uh, we had Courtney from Give Kids the World uh, on first this morning. We had Aaron Del Prince from the Indie Disney Meet. We just talked to Eric from Expedition Roasters. Coming up next, we have Aaron Ripmaster from the Diz Dads podcast and also Mouse Master Travel. Uh, we do have an open segment coming up later in the show. We're going to do probably a call. No? Not. Exactly. I'm, I'm actually communicating uh, with Leanne from the Lemon Sisters. And while they... they um, have originally, you know, said that they not be able to make it. Sounds like they're going to be able to come on the show today. Well, awesome. Then we would have them or a call in segment, a little bit of both. We'll see. We don't make promises. We have Whitney Wickham, who we had probably, uh, we had one of our best interviews with her. Uh, it was a great interview about two weeks ago. You can catch the replay uh, on iTunes. Uh, we also have Jeff Barnes, who we've interviewed a few times here, a uh, fantastic Disney author. And then finally, we have a, you know, people have been bugging us for a long time to get them. We have RJ Organ coming on, who's a fantastic Disney artist. Fantastic. Uh, we have Mike Rahman from the BR Guest Podcast, uh, our, a big fan of, uh, we listen to their show. Another fan favorite we listen to is Jimmy Horn over at the Disney Nerds Podcast. Um, you know, I know we were running into a little bit of issues later in the day. We were we uh, with Big Fat Panda, Mr. John. Uh, that one's still teetering right now, but uh, we hope to get be able to get him on uh, later in the night. We have Alex and Jessica giving Uncle Danny and Mr. Chris a quick break and allowing them to talk for a nice half hour segment. We know uh, a little ladies talk for them. Uh, Ryan Lehman later on in that day from the TMR Productions. Uh, we have Trent and Jenny from the Disney DNA podcast, the Divas Dish Diz podcast, two years in a row coming on later tonight. And we're going to be wrapping up with Rudy Clark from Crazy for Disney podcast. Yeah, hold on, hold on, I'm, I'm arranging. Oh, it. sorry. <laughs> Didn't mean to leave you hanging out there. Um, I don't realize I'm typing unless you can actually hear the typing. Um, no, I can. Um, you know, so we're we're happy to uh, be doing this today. This is this is going to be a long day. I mean, we're approaching. Yeah, but surprisingly, it's, we're approaching a one o'clock already. Uh, we are we are just a tad over one o'clock. Um, we have our next guest coming on about one fifteen. Uncle Danny does have the jitters already. I'm a little antsy. Um, how about being tortured sitting in Casey's corner and they're out of corn dog nuggets? But you know what? They have regular fantastic hot dogs. Though. So you give me that mac and cheese hot dog and I would be all over that. Um yeah, so we have a couple fan favorites coming on today. We have a we have a very solid lineup. Uh um yeah, and I know people were saying, you know, when they go to donate through that link, it's coming up with a man named Steven's name. That's just our coordinator um through the Give Kids the World. It'll say behind the ears podcast and just keep going, keep confirming, you'll be fine. It, it, we're we're tracking all of it. Um you know, you need to have, you know, they they set up our link for us and everything like that. So that's the only reason we're seeing it. Let's do a quick check on uh the money here yeah yep we are uh, about 11 just over 1100 dollars and going strong it's crazy that we were uh we're able to raise that type of money that quickly uh so thank you all for doing that uh it means a lot to us um you know, I, I know we, we were having problems with a couple people uh, with internet connections later in the show. They were afraid. So, you know, we do appreciate them agreeing. And if we just felt that, you know, the internet was going to be too much of an issue, we want to bring you uh, the best possible content possible. So, and we also want to give the listeners a chance to come on and talk as well. So we will do some form of a call in. Like Chris said, maybe we'll, we'll mess around with a little grind my gears. And uh, if you missed any of the interviews and you're, you know, you obviously can rewatch the replay later. And I will be uh, dissecting the show into segments and uh, releasing them as podcasts. 
So expect, uh, you know, if you want to be able to re-listen that way, uh, you could do that as well. Um, it's been a fun day so far, though. I will it's, say, it's, it's been kind of it's been kind of crazy. Um, I've told I've told people in the past. I go, there, you know, the schedule is subject to change. Um, we are certainly going to like. I, I actually got, just got a message. Um, from John from bigfatpanda.com. And he, you know, so I hate to say this, John, John and I have been bouncing back and forth. We've been really trying to get an interview with him in general, um, starting last year. And unfortunately we've been like, like not overlap. We've been like way not overlapping correctly. And unfortunately he is not going to be able to join us today only because his internet connection is going to be like very questionable. And I think it's, it's very mutually agreed that, when when an internet connection isn't working well for any of our guests or for us for that matter, because we've had the problem too, um, it's a very frustrating time and it doesn't put on a good show. And we want to put on a good show. John wants to put on a good show. I just want to give a shout out to him, bigfatpanda.com. He's he's an awesome YouTuber that just puts, puts out some of the best Disney related videos out there on YouTube. And so by all means, give him a give him a check on his site. If you don't subscribe to him already, go ahead and subscribe to his show. Um, if I'm not mistaken, he puts out one main show a month, and but he also does a lot of other live things and also follow him on Instagram uh, as well as his Facebook pages. Uh, great guy. I appreciate his consideration. And, and I know he was he's not in he's not in town. He's not usually at his he's not where, you know, his general vicinity where he lives. He's actually um, somewhere else this weekend. And you know what? I certainly appreciate the fact that he was willing to give it a try. But there's too many variables and we both kind of like, yeah, it it just may not work out. And, but do first off, John, if you're watching, listening, thank you so much for at least, you know, really seriously considering and trying to be a part of the show. Love to have you on in a future endeavor. Uh, So maybe we'll figure it out within the next couple of weeks. John's a really busy guy and um, you know, he's putting out a great, he's a great Disney content creator. Um, I'm a big fan of his work. Uh, I hope to, hope to actually meet him sometime uh, walking around Walt Disney World, which, of course, as everybody knows, you know, could be anywhere, anytime between tomorrow and Christmas. So um, I know it's getting old, but still, it's funny. Um, so anyway, give give him a give him a like over on Facebook. Go ahead and subscribe to his channel. But that is when that is when Danny that I think we are going to actually have a time to. Um, Let's see, that's going to be like 6.30 Eastern time. I think that's when we're going to do um, kind of a grind our gears or a call in or some other cool things. And everybody else has confirmed it. As I said, you know, Leanne's going to join us from the Lemon Sisters after we talk to Aaron. And I'm really glad that they're able to join us after all. That is absolutely fabulous. I, I got to be honest with you. Um, I know we are trying to, we've been talking with Aaron and say, hey, can we possibly get a table reserved to be next to them or at the Indie Disney meet? Because are you okay? Dude, I am way too hyper right now. <laughs> I'm freaking out, man. <laughs> um, okay. Um, <laughs> sorry. All right, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Someone just challenged me. And I want to see if I can do it. I, 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 and Reek says, hey, it's Danny. It's in Reek. It's in Reek. Oh, well, there, I lost. Never mind, Enrique. See, I would have I would have pronounced Enrique. Am I correct or am I wrong? But, but you know, Enrique. Enrique. I'm horrible with names. I actually got a I got a message from someone that's going to be joining the show, and I realized I did, I I misspelled his name. I'm like, oh, I feel bad. Hmm. I oh, wait, this- we got the table next to the Lemon Sisters. Yay! <laughs> And of course, in new news, um, Danny and Chris and the Lemon Sisters will not be invited to the 2019 <laughs> Disney meet because they caused too many problems at the Defender Expo. No, I'm just, uh, um, I just think it, I just think it's funny. I mean, we just had a great time with them, and we actually, um, you know, we actually interviewed Jeff Barnes um, before last year's meet, and then we actually got to meet him in person because he was at the meet, and he's going to be. If I'm, I'm pretty sure he's going to be at the meet again. And it was just really cool to meet these awesome people. And oh, see, you know, it's one of those things. And so Christine's get up and jog in place. No, I don't want to see Uncle Danny jog in place. It's no. not pretty. Um, no, it's funny watching Uncle Danny jog. So 